Hi everyone, I'm Lindsay. And I'm Caden. And we're Adventures of a Stormtrooper. And today, we're gonna show you how to put Chewbacca on. So come with us on this adventure. Well, before we get started putting Chewbacca on, I just wanted to show you all the individual parts. He's out of all three of the costumes that I personally have, he has the least amount of pieces. So you've got the pants, and they have uh, nice suspenders, and I put hockey pads on the inside of my pants to help fill them out, especially to help fill out the thighs uh, to cover the stilts. And then the shirt, and then I also have hockey pads on the top of the, they're just hockey shoulder pads that I got at a, a used store. And then the bandolier, the bandolier comes in two pieces um, and you just put it on the satchel, just buttons on to the back or buttons on to the bandolier strap. These pads here I use to help cover my feet and uh, ease the transition between the stilts and my legs so it doesn't look so like obvious. The Chewbacca mask, of course. Uh, gloves. I know you wouldn't think that you'd be able to see them because of the extra long sleeves, but when I pick up stuff and um, kind of talk to kids, give high fives, it does show. And they've got the rubber ape fingers glued on to a um, like a black stretch. They were a kind of like opera gloves and then some fur glued on. And then um, the all important black undersuit. It's just a plain black set of uh, whatever you can find. It's just a long sleeve black pant and shoot. And then I like to wear a, a balaclava because when I look up in Chewbacca, uh, my chin is visible. And then the stilts. Uh, they are drywall stilts encased with some foam. And then you've got the toes. And just for curiosity's sake, they do have a nice tread on the bottom. All right, let's suit up. But first, before we suit up, we gotta put our makeup on. Step one, makeup time. Okay, I know this is weird for a man to say, the all important makeup bag. I don't know if every Wookiee has a makeup bag, but I certainly do. And uh, this one my mom made me. So I like to put my makeup on before I actually go to any event because I find it really tedious and I've had to put it on in this tiny little mirror and you can do it. It's not fun. So I like to do it at home. You do get some weird stares for walking into a gas station to use the restroom, but I also walk around in a Chewbacca at events, so it's worth a piece. So I like to use this Mel Ron Makeup Skin Prep. And what it does, it just takes all the degreaser, all the oils off your skin. You don't need that much. Lindsay, back up. You're too close. And I like to use uh, eyeliner for right around my eye. This is Maybelline Long Lasting Eyeliner. And this is just an eyeliner brush. Tedious, but I think it's worth it.
So now that I got my beautiful eyeliner done, I didn't do it to the best of my abilities because we're just filming a video and not going to an event. Usually I get really nitpicky about all the spots, so it's going to look a little spotty. Okay. Uh, but then I use this uh, Raven Black Manic, it's just black eye base paint that's safe to go around the eyes. And a uh, makeup sponge that I just found at Walmart, nothing special about it. Give ourselves a nice back line. Don't you mean the sexy wookie look? This oh yes, yeah, so this is the sexy sexy wookie look. It makes all the lady wookies very excited. <laughs> and I go all the way up to my eyebrows because if I don't, my eyebrows when I open the jaw and the mask do show so I tried not doing my eyebrows and then Lindsay was like what are you doing? But there's that sexy look complete. And then I have Methylon makeup setting powder. So it takes all the excess liquid out of the cake makeup. And I got this sponge off their website. This is their, like, if you type that into, I can put it in the description down below. So you just tab it on, and you'll see kind of a color change. And that's sucking all the excess moisture out of the cake makeup so it won't run because I sweat really bad in Chewbacca so I don't want to run and the makeup like the first time I did it just like straight cream and it like ran down my face so I asked some friends that were in theater and they recommended the setting powder and ever since I haven't had to set haven't had the runs or with the prep pre prep on the face and then because of the setting powder it makes my eyelashes all white and it bothers me. So I bought all my wife's mascara. <laughs> Any mascara will do. There we go. We're ready to rock the Wookiee. All right, now we got our makeup on. I got the black undersuit on. You don't need to do any undersuit. The fur does hide it, but the fur does sometimes separate and it's just black mesh underneath so it helps hide you. It's just black mesh with hook and loop. And the whole suit that you see here, I did not personally make it. I had a friend from the UK, his name is Paul, and it, it, the whole Wookiee is from PMP Props. So this is his cr creation and I'm just wearing it and showing it off. So do not give me any of the credit, I'm just showing off my beautiful costume that I commissioned. But the first step is to put the pants on. And I am only 5'5", five five, and in costume we'll give you a measurement once we get it all on, and we'll see how tall I am after. But I should be somewhere between 5'7" and seven two, so not wrong numbers. Seven uh, feet. Yeah, seven feet and seven five is what I meant. So these pants are really long on me. And this is just the strap for my hockey pants underneath and I do these up after I put my mic in. These are not special shoes, these are just my favorite shoes. All right, so now that we got those on, 
Now it's time to put these bad boys on stilts. They are 20 inches high because I am too short. Okay, so now that I got to this point, what I do extra is I put a piece of foam to cover my feet from here to here because it, with me having such tall stilts, it kind of sagged where his knee should be. So I made these foam covers to cover, put that one on the floor, to cover that sagging spot. I don't know if anybody else likes that idea. It just. The sagging kind of bothered me, so this was how I was able to kind of fix it. And I am aware that I am wearing the drywall stilts opposite of how drywall uh, drywallers wear them. I know the brace is supposed to go on the outside, but in my opinion, it, the stilts showed too much. So I wore them backwards, and I've learned to that was how I learned to walk on stilts, so I know it's wrong. And people have told me time and time again, but I do not have any balance issues and no, I don't catch them when I walk. Because of the stilts, I have to walk differently than my normal gait, so it doesn't really affect me. So thank you for your concern. So I actually, this is a stool that I bought at Menards and this stool folds up and it goes with me in the bags just in case I don't have a tall enough stool. So this is the only stool that I can, a normal chair is too small for the size of stilts that I have for me to get up. So this stool is my normal on the go stool. And then I have a mic system that I use to make all the wookie noises. And it's just a, a voice boost box that you can use with any, it comes with a mic that I use for my normal storage trooper. I also use this one for Phasma. It's a good universal one. I think it's only around $30. Um, this is the Mecom system. Uh, and it comes with an eight trigger switchboard and it's programmed for Chewbacca. And it also comes with its own battery source. So, just took the battery source all together here. So what I like to do is I like to hide the soundboard, the battery, and I like to hide the mic in a plastic bag because I get so sweaty that it saves the electronics from getting ruined from my sweat. This was a good trick that I learned with my Stormtrooper because I put my sound system in the exact same spot underneath my chest plate. And it gets really sweaty, especially in like summertime gigs and things like that. So I just put it in a plain sandwich bag. And this is just, don't it seem weird, but I just put it in a, in a sock to kind of hold it on. I know there's probably fancier ways of doing it, but this way I can use the same speaker for three different costumes. So, and I use it, and I do it the sa exact same way for all my costumes. So I put it in a baggie, keep it safe from moisture. My poor mic here. Sorry if that was really ruffly. Switch. 
There we go. And then I just put my soundboard. I made a little cut in my shirt. And then I feed it down my arm. So it keeps the wire from snagging on any fur. So that's a... I'm sure other Wookiees have this problem, but you don't want anything pulling out your fur that you someone works so hard to latch in for you. And extra, I just tuck in the almighty sandwich bag here. And we'll turn them on. And when I'm ready, I put it up on my palm and trigger away. Works really nice. And I will say, you can't be a Wookiee without, uh, without having a loving and caring human being to be your Wookiee handler. My wife is the one that does all this for Chewie. She's fixing his legs all up right now, covering up the stilts. Alright, next goes the shirt over the top. I'm going to have to watch out for this fan because I like to put it on. I tried putting it on before, like when I was sitting. It didn't really work out that well, so it's easier for me to put it on. I'm sure other people put it on not standing up, but it's easier for me to put it on like this. Uh, but my trusty mic's going to have to hold on because otherwise I will rip it off. So next is going to be the bandolier. And I don't know if other Wookiees do this with their bandoliers, but I have a snap right in the middle and it goes to a snap on my shoulder here to help keep it from slipping off my shoulder when I bend down to talk to people. And then I have a snap on the satchel that connects to a snap under the fur, which Lindsay is an expert at finding this snap. Um, and it kept it from riding. It's like a needle in a haystack. <laughs> but anyway, what my issue I was having is my bandolier, all my fur was covering it, so it wasn't like showing. And I didn't want that. It's beautiful leather work and we didn't want to waste the leather work, so. Satisfying click. Oh, I found it on the first try. Oh, look at you, hot shot. I've done this too many times now. You're a Wookiee expert. Now she does that. I make sure my soundboard's all clear of hair. Because who doesn't love a little extra hair? There we go. Okay. All right. Time for Chewbacca's head. Yep. Or is it the other way? Other way. Sorry. I can never remember. I know, I'm picky. Because I've got my hands trained to do one oh, way. Yeah. And this is just a, a mask stand that I built myself. It's just a styrofoam hat mannequin head on a wooden base that I all got at Hobby Lobby. I think the whole thing cost me $12 and it works great to hold them in place. And then to kind of show the inside of the mask. Hopefully you can, you know, Lindsay, grab that camera for a second. So 
So it's a fiberglass construction and then a hinged jaw, and then it's got a hard hat um, helmet, and that's how it stays on my head. So now I'm putting on my gloves. After I put my soundboard in the right spot, mix glue. First glove I can do myself, second glove I can't do myself. Okay, it's good. Now I like to shake it out, and then you get the professional. Wookie Groomer and her royal stool. Tell them what tool you got there. And then this is to brush them if I need to brush him. It's a wallpaper brush, just a wallpaper brush. It works good because there's so much area. And then I just fluff them up if I need to. There you go. And now we're ready to. And that's how you put on a Chewbacca. Well, I hope that helps. I didn't see any Chewbacca videos to help me when I was doing it, so I hope this helps someone else. If you have any comments or suggestions, I'd love to help you make your Wookiee dreams come true. And if I can't answer your questions, I can direct you to people much smarter than me, because I do not know it all and don't claim to know it all. Uh, Thanks for coming along on our Wookiee adventure. <coughs> <coughs>